Today, I'm going to show you how you can set up a webhook in Monday.com where we can get the entire data of the whole row and not just the column where the webhook was implemented. So the basic idea for this application was if I click the status button to transcribe, I want to send the Google Drive link, the prompt ID, the batch name, and the batch ID to my server, do something with it, and then create a Google Doc link, and then set it back and post it in here. This is not possible with Monday.com or their webhook by itself. There's a way to do it with like a really complex Sapir thing in the backend, but that's not a straightforward or good solution. Because right now the automation looks like this. So when the status changes to transcribe, send a webhook. But if we do this now, so if I change this, you can see the automation is running and it's finished. Let's look into the server. The server right now only prints out the data that we receive from Monday. And if you look into this, we can see this is all the data we get. And the only column we get is the transcribe one, nothing else. So now is the question, how can we get the other um, columns in that row? For this, we need to call the monday.com API by using the pools ID that this webhook got us to get the data. And then from there, we can also send back data to the table to update everything. And now let me show you in detail how you can build something like that and how it works. Let's first set up the automation in webhook by itself. So our goal again is we click transcribe, we send the data. For this, we click integrate, then we search for webhook. We then search for when the status changes to something, send a webhook. We add this to our board and then we have to add the address that it sends the data to. Now, if you run a local server, like we are trying to do, we cannot do that because it gives us a local address and Monday needs a web address. For this, we need to emulate a web server. Locally, we can do this easiest way with ngrok. So we just install ngrok. We then go on our PC where the ngrok Excel is saved. Then we type ngrok HTTP 5000 and we simulate a, an address. We then copy this address or you just take the address of the actual server that you're using. We copy this. We then add this in here and then we make a slash and then we have to add our own server where we try to process the data. So for this, we go into Python. We make a new app.py or however you want to call your Flask server. We import necessary packages. So Flask request JSONify and then we set the app equals Flask name and then we make our first web connection. For this, we make app route webhook or whatever you want to call it, we make the first function. And then we take the data that we receive. And then the first thing we need to do with Monday is we will get a challenge. And this challenge we need to return so Monday sees that the address we provide actually works. So we do if challenge in data we then return the challenge in a JSONified version we then go back and then we do and we make we run the fast guy so if name and we can save this and then we can't run our app so we just call Python app.py we remember this address that we gave it we go back into our link where we go slash and then web hook or whatever you call it we try to connect and it has worked now we can do status so if status changes to transcribe send webhook and then we can add this to the board it's active and we have our webhook connected. And now we have to find out how we can get the pools ID from this data so we can then later use the API. Let's make a new function where we actually can then get the other rows 
with the Monday.com API. For this, you first need to have a Monday.com API token. For this, you just go on Monday.com, you click on your profile, you click on developers, you then go to access, which is down here, my access tokens, and then you copy your token. I have saved mine in a .env file and I can call it like that. And if you have yours, you can also do the same, or you just like make API token equals to, and then the string that you copy. So, and then we have to get the pulse ID. The pulse ID basically defines the row that we're talking about. For this, we just do the pulse ID. So pulse ID is the data that we get, the event, and then get the pulse ID out of it. This is just the dictionary that Monday gives us back. And you can then find the things in there if it changes for you somehow. But this is how I find it usually. And then we make a new function called get Monday data, where we add the pulse ID and the API token. And for this, we just make a query. You can find this query exactly in the money.com API documentation. So I just copied that and added the pulse ID, added the headers, so the authentication, where we add the API token. Then we make the request to the Monday.com API, where we set it in. And then the data we get back, we can then take out what we need. So we got the items, the board ID, and the column values. And important with this is, I first got the raw data back from Monday.com and saw which of the columns represented which data point. So for example, the Google Drive link represented the text for underscore underscore one. But if you have named your table differently, it might be differently. There's probably a way to make this more responsive and it finds out which actually is which, but I made it this way. So it was just hard coded in that. So you have to most likely change that depending on how you name it and like what, how it's in the data response. But you can just like print out the data you get and then find out the column names. Then we search for that and then we turn the Google Drive link, the batch name, the item ID, the prompt ID and the board ID. And we just get that by basically. We send out an API request with the pools ID, so like the row to monday.com and then it gets us all the columns in that row back. Then we go back to our main function where we then just do it like this, where we then just return all the stuff we get back. And then we can also, for example, print the Google Drive link, save it, we can run the function again. And if we then go back into it, and then we do transcribe, we go back in the server, we can see it actually prints out the Google Drive link. And now let me show you how we can now post something back to the same row. Let's actually post something back to Monday. For this, we make the function update Monday doc link with the item ID, the board ID, the doc link, and the API token. It's again just an API request to Monday.com. So we need the API token, we need the item ID to find out the row, and the board ID to know which board we're talking about because we are basically changing the data that is already there. And then you can see it again, we got a mutation query this time and we change the value. But as you can see, the column ID is text one underscore underscore one, because I know that at text one underscore underscore one is the doc link. And if it changes for you, you have to also then find out at which point, so at which column you want to change it, because you can't just say it by the name, you have to actually use the value that Monday provides, so the column ID which is really important thing, otherwise you change something else. And we use the board ID, which we get back from the data that we create to know where we actually want to post to. And we get this board ID also from the get money data. So we send that out, we get the board ID, the item ID, we add it in, we make the request with the headers, basically the authentication, add our API token again, and then we send it out to the same API address. And then we can also call this function afterwards. So we just go and take the update money.com. Up my com link. And then in there we add pools ID, board ID, and just some random name that we used in the API token. And in here, you can then add the value that you want to add. In this example, it would just be a Google Doc link.
and then we can save this. And now let's try if this actually works. So we change the status to transcribe. We see the automation is running. We get, and you actually see it posted the link in there. And now you know everything you need to know how to integrate a webhook, how to get the data from the entire row and how to actually update data with the API. I hope this was helpful. If there are any other questions, just write in the comments and I would love to answer them or make a more separate video about them. And see you in the next one.